All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Cap Table. So stoked to have John Sarasulo here. John, thanks so much for joining it us. It is a pleasure to be here. A lovely venue, and nice to see you guys. I uh, know. Uh, what are your What are your thoughts on? So this is recorded on what today is the twenty second. I have no idea. Is, <laughs> it's, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's, it's the day before Thanksgiving. We'll put it at that. There you go. And we're here right now, and it's Christmas decorated. What are your thoughts on celebrating Christmas before Thanksgiving? Well, you Do you know, listen to Christmas music right now that's or That's a pretty controversial topic. I <laughs> actually love Christmas and the Christmas season and decoration, so I'm happy to see Christmas trees up yeah. anytime. Yeah, what Thanksgiving decorations are yeah, there? Yeah, what are they? Yeah. You know, well, like, I just feel like everyone no just one like skips for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's like the odd man out here. Like, I'm okay with that personally as well. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I love Christmas music. I, I don't know. I was just asking. I think I'm on your side as well. Yeah, well. I prefer, like, let's just get to Christmas after Halloween. Like, <laughs> we're on it. the roll. What are we waiting for? <laughs> so, John, where are you from originally? So, I grew up in New York. Okay. Um, left, actually left New York after high school. Haven't lived there since. So, doesn't really feel like home anymore. Where in New York? Uh, I was born in Queens. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So you really are a city slicker. You well, grew up in the city. <laughs> yeah, so I was born in Queens and went to high school in a little bit further out in Long Island in Nassau County. So got it. Um, I love I love urban living, uh, but um, yeah, but uh, I kind of turned my back on New York and uh, actually joined the Navy right out of high school. Oh, really? Uh, and uh, spent nine years in the Navy. So that really kind of changes you a little bit when you when you. When you turn your back on uh, high school living and all of a sudden find yourself. Yeah. And what made you want to go to the Navy? Well, I went to the Naval Academy. Okay. uh, And um, uh, what made me want to go there? My sister actually was at the Naval Academy a year ahead of me. Oh, wow. wow. Your sister. That is interesting. She was was a groundbreaker. She was in the third class with females at service academies. So she was there at the very beginning when they started admitting women. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, being a high school kid and going to visit her and seeing – all the pageantry and cool uniforms. Thought, hey, this could be fun. Yeah. Wow. Little did I know <laughs> what it was really going to be like. <laughs> how, so, how long were you were you in the Navy after? Uh, uh, so, four years at school, and then five years after. That's the uh, the commitment that you required to the serve. Commitment level. And then I left the Navy after that. And and how was that experience? I mean, we we haven't talked to anyone about yeah you know, through that. So it was uh, it, it truly was an awesome experience. I mean, it, uh, to be a seventeen year old and find yourself in a kind yeah. of hostile environment, to say the least, to begin with, as they kind of get you through the boot camp part of being in the military. Uh, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about what you're capable of um, around some just extraordinary people. I mean, my best friends today are guys that I went through mm. school with and served with in the Navy. And uh, so it was a great, great experience. Taught me a lot. really prepared me for lots of challenges I faced. Yeah, and I've heard that People who, you know, are, are enlisted and, and go through um, that or, you know, very end up being very successful businessmen just because of, you know, the, the way that their mindset is cultivated uh, throughout that. Maybe not yeah, all I think of them. It's but yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's interesting because it does prepare you. The whole goal of it is to prepare you, prepare you to make decisions under pressure. That's kind of the whole goal of military training. Um, so, you know, that it forces you to come to grips with, you know, the emotions when, when things are getting crazy and, uh, to think through challenges and to plan out responses. Uh, and while that is, you know, it's really helpful when you're in a military situation, it, it, Mm. uh, those, those things apply, I think, meaningfully in, uh, in, in commercial business and, um, and I think it, it, there's also, you know, a lot of emphasis on leadership and developing people and building teams, which translates very closely to what you need to do in sure. building a successful business. When you were in the Navy, did you ever imagine doing what you're doing now? Like, was this part of the plan or uh, when no did this clue. become the plan? Yeah, no, no clue. So um, I served five years and uh, was on a ship for three of those years and spent a lot of time out at sea, which was which was fun when you're 25 years old and seeing the <laughs> world. But uh, I, I decided at that point uh, I wanted to try to make a, a pivot, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was an engineer in the Navy, so uh, my first job I had I, I didn't I didn't know anything about what engineers in the civilian world did, 
Uh, my first job was at a manufacturing plant. Uh, I was an engineer in a tire factory in South Carolina. Were you a mechanical <laughs> engineer then? or I was a nuclear engineer. Oh, a nuclear. nuclear. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, so I was on a nuclear-powered cruiser. We had two nuclear reactors on our ship. Um, so there, there was not a lot of, there still isn't a lot of demand for nuclear engineers in the civilian world. We haven't, unfortunately, haven't built a nuclear power plant in a long time. We're going to regret that, yeah. I suspect, down the road. But um, <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was kind of time to pivot. And uh, so I spent the first eight or so years of my career in the manufacturing plant as an engineer. Mm. And then where, where did this whole um, side of you decided to jump into, you know, the, the business side and uh, you know, somewhat entrepreneurial yeah. and, and stuff like that? Yeah, so uh, I, I was working for a telecommunications company and I got relocated here to Nashville in 2000 to lead a service business, which I had never done before. Um, we had a telecom services division, and we just started one up. And we did uh, we did things like build cell towers, do cell tower maintenance, mm -hmm. uh, and build out kind of the telephone backbone infrastructure. So we were a contractor to the big phone companies in their switching centers, essentially putting equipment in. Um, and that was the first time I was really exposed to um, acquisitions, which has become something that I've really focused a lot of my energy on. We did we did a roll up of small companies that were providing these services back to the big carriers, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, Nextel, those guys. And um, uh, we bought a bunch of them around the country and kind of built a big national footprint providing these services. And uh, so I really enjoyed that. That was, uh, so that was the first time I kind of stepped out of an engineering kind of a role. I uh, really enjoyed working with entrepreneurs because the folks that owned the companies we acquired had sure. built companies with their own hands. There were small businesses, you know, generally maybe 10 to 30 or 40 employees, something in that range is, you know, probably the typical range. And, um, and it just, it was a great experience, uh, working with them, um, bringing them onto a team. And a lot of, in a lot of cases, this was a big company. This was Alcoa was the parent company. So a lot of cases it was running interference between the big company kind of tendency to want to squash innovation and and individuality out of businesses and the businesses wanting to you know continue to do things the way they had always done them so it was an interesting balance of trying to kind of maintain a small company environment for the employees and for customers uh while having the resources of a big company yeah and, and can you talk about what a roll-up strategy is uh, for for those who are listening because it's, yeah you know, sure and your strategy with that Sure. So I'm I'm on my third roll up now, and mm. the the idea of a roll up is simply to to find an industry that's very fragmented, that has lots of small players, like um, mom and pops, well, little mom and pop companies. Yep, and uh, and to 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 bring those companies together uh, into one organization, to to draw benefits from the the strength they generally all have, at closest to their customer and. Very, very intimate relationship with their employees uh, and really strong cultures, uh, and to marry that with the resources and capabilities of a bigger organization and, and leverage uh, those resources to grow those companies even faster. Mm. Um, so the first one I did was in the telecom services, and then uh, in 2008, I left there and joined a company called ADS Security, a local Nashville Based oh yeah, security I think my, business. My family has ADS. Probably do. We're, <laughs> we're the we we were the largest kind of independent local uh, alarm company. We did residential and commercial security systems. Sure. Uh, and we had a awesome team there. We did forty five acquisitions over the twelve years that I was there. Uh, built the sixteenth largest security company in the U.S. This, this is a private equity backed sure. uh, effort. Um, and uh, just had a really amazing experience at, at bringing together all these wonderful small business owners uh, and brought them together on a team uh, and uh, experienced some really significant growth. We fin finished up with 25 locations across the Southeast. We were pre pretty much the dominant player in the Southeast mm. and, um, and had a great run. We, uh, we sold that business in 2019. We actually, we just got too big for the 
private equity company that owned it. Was, it was a family family desk out of Pennsylvania. Um, and we had grown so much and gotten so big that it just kind of outgrew them. And uh, so we went through a process and eventually sold the company to a, um, a large uh, security company uh, out of the Northeast that was looking for a Southeast presence. So it was a, it was a great run. It was a lot of fun. And that's kind of the, you know, the idea of Rollup is to be able to take all these independent companies from my perspective, not squash the the creativity and entrepreneurialism that exists in these businesses, but uh, but give them the the things that they often lack, which is the resources for marketing, for technology, uh, for recruiting and hiring and fleet management, all mm-hmm. the things that um, that you know bigger companies just do by their nature. These little small businesses are trying to do off the side of their table. You know, at the end of the day, when they finish all their work. And uh, so we're able to bring that together. And if you can, from my perspective, you can if you can balance maintaining that spirit in those businesses while providing them the resources to help them grow, it, it's a really powerful combination. Yeah, and it's it shows that you know there, there's room for scale for for yeah. that as well. When these you know mom and pops in these small cities or whatever, they can't really grow. But if you're going in to 10 areas, yeah. you know, and consolidating the back ends, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and so what's this current roll-up strategy that, that you're on right now? So uh, my my team from ADS uh, got back together again, and uh, we did some, started uh, about a year, a little over a year ago, and um, started looking at home services businesses. We, mm. we really like residential services, uh, especially with the potential economic challenges that we have ahead of us. Uh, it's a really, um, you might think of it as a recession-resistant sure. uh, mm-hmm. industry in a lot of ways. Um, we, we knew field services, you know, we know how to deploy technicians and trucks and tools. Uh, and so we looked at all different sorts of residential services businesses. We looked at everything from uh, landscaping to pest control to, you know, everything you could imagine that would have a tr- truck roll up in your driveway. Um, and we decided on HVAC and plumbing businesses um, for a couple of important reasons. It has the attributes that we were looking for. Number one, it's extremely fragmented. There are very few large companies. It's almost no national HVAC or plumbing businesses, mm. truly national. Um, there are some kind of large companies that are present in multiple cities, but not many of those. The mm. industry is dominated by small local individual competitors. Uh, so it was a perfect environment for prospecting to find companies. Um, there's, um, it's the kind of service that people are gonna need no matter what the economic conditions are. So, you know, the, the plumbers we've talked to have a saying that when there's water on your floor, you don't ask for competitive bids. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, when, when, you, when your HVAC system is out, often in the summertime or in the winter when it's cold, uh, you're going to get it fixed. And when you got a leak, you're going to get it fixed. And so plumbing and HVAC is a business that investors are very interested yeah, in. Yeah, I've, heard, I've heard of that. And, and what's funny, too, is I also heard of, uh, I actually got emailed an opportunity the, <laughs> the last week, and it was swim schools. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. You yeah. know, my mom runs a swim school. Does she? And I remember working at the Entrepreneur Center. I had a woman come pitch me on a swim school that she was starting. And like swim schools make a shit ton of money, honestly. Yeah. Like my mom charges, like each will have a class full of, I mean, my mom is really not making bank in Iowa, (laughs) but if you go to like a wealthier neighborhood, you can charge for each head and it just like prints money. So that's what I'm saying. And (laughs) he sent me this and I was like, this doesn't make sense originally, but then looking at it, you, there are so many like things out there and there's like two major competitors, which are one's called like goldfish and something. But anyways, it was the most bizarre thing. But after thinking about it, I was like, this kind of makes sense. So I totally feel that with HVAC. Like, I mean, you just Google HVAC Nashville and there is Literally, like hundreds of yes. companies. Yeah. It's Hillary over heating and cooling or whelming. Yeah. And like none of them, you're like, what the heck is the difference between any of these, anyways? And so I feel like it'd be easy for someone to come in and really differentiate, yeah. get that SEO popping, yeah. and then boom, like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you're right. Because of, the, because of the nature of the fragmentation in the space, 
there are very few companies that do uh, that do marketing well. There are very few companies that yeah, they're um, HVAC. They're run yeah. by HVAC experts. They're not run by yeah. you know all these companies. <clears throat> and it was the same in the security space. Um, all these companies are run for the most part. They're all run by someone who was a plumber, was an HVAC technician, or in the case of security, we were installing security systems. Who at some point decided. There's something I don't like about the company I'm working at. I can do this better. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and that's what I love about the process because I get to meet the most extraordinary people. They're not, they're not the most sophisticated business people necessarily in the world. They're really smart. They're very successful. They're making lots of money. Um, but you know, they didn't go to business school and they learned the hard way what it's like to build a company. Uh, and they're just extraordinary people. And and our our model is also a little bit different from a lot of roll ups. Uh, and that this gets back to the, the talent of these individuals. So our, our strategy is we, we have built out a kind of a back office team that handles all the, the functions of running a business that these guys often hate. Payroll, taxes, insurance, benefits, you know, all the stuff that you need to do, mm-hmm. but that guys from their backgrounds you know, generally are not very well prepared for and just not something that really appeals to them. So we, we built out those capabilities. This is exactly the same model we used at ADS, uh, ADS Security. Um, so at Lead Partners, we have this team that handles that back office stuff. And what we do is we, we want to find owners that, that want to sell to us but continue to work for us. Mm. So essentially, we buy their company. They continue to run it. And most would usually hire people or – uh, buy companies where they want to retire, correct? A lot so you of really have a different type of yeah. profile. A lot of roll-ups want the, the owner to exit because they want to go in and change everything and kind of bring it together in their mm. their mentality of what they want to build. And that, it's not a bad strategy, but but ours is just different. We want to retain what uh, the spirit and the enthusiasm and the entrepreneurialism that each of these companies has. We want to retain that. So our goal is to free them up to focus their time on their customers and their employees, take all that back office stuff off their plate, and then overlay on top of that sophisticated marketing um, uh, field service technology so that they have the ability to, you know, send texts to their customers when they're on their way and, and communicate and deal with a customer using technology, which is a real value to lots of folks today, as opposed to the old-fashioned way of we'll be there sometime between, you know, eight and three Mm. Uh, hang around your house and wait until we knock on your door. Um, you know, bringing technology to bear uh, to make that customer experience a better one is a real differentiator. So, so our model is, you know, we want these guys to stay. We want them to continue to run their business. It, it's a very transparent process. We don't even change their names. They continue operating under the no names. No way. You don't owners. even change their names. So it's transparent to their customers, their employees. It's largely transparent to other than you know, benefits changing a little bit and getting a payroll check from a different provider. Uh, you know, the goal is to make it uh, essentially a non-event for the team and then provide the support uh, uh, to help them to grow faster. And a huge, one, of, one of the kind of, un, I think, underappreciated benefits of building this network is we bring these owners together quarterly uh, and having a bunch of them sit in a room and oh, talk I bet to that's each amazing. Other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they never have often, these guys have never had a chance to do that. Yeah. You know, how are you pricing? How are you compensating your team? What are you doing to recruit? What's working for you? Because now they're not competing. Yeah. They need to work together. Yeah, they're all on the same team. And, that's great. Uh, so, so giving them the opportunity to, um, um, you know, often, often these guys are not quite to retirement age, but starting to think about it. So maybe in their 50s. Mm-hmm. Um, so it gives them an opportunity to take a little bit of money off the table, um, often continue with an investment in our larger company, Lead Partners, so they have a little uh, interest in the long-term success of our business. And uh, so they love to share best practices and, uh, you know, how, how is your margin so high? What are you doing? How, you know, how do you manage? How are you driving so much revenue with so few people? How are you scheduling your business? Uh, you know, you, a lot of companies that do roll-ups want to impose their strategy. Here's how you guys are going to do it our way. And our view is we want to get these guys together. They're going to figure out between them what the best way to do it is. They're going to help each other learn from each other. Sure. And it's a much more um, 
it, it's a it's a phenomenal culture that we end up building because of that, and we have a back office support team, largely here in Nashville, that really understands their job is to make the lives of the folks in the field easier, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So we're a very very kind of customer focused and field focused organization, um, and the combination is just it, you know it really is magic when it when it works well. John, can you talk us through the process of an acquisition, mm -hmm. like? Going, starting with, you know, going to find that deal and how you do it, maybe particularly with these HVAC companies. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so everything about the model that we're using now at Lead Partners with these HVAC and plumbing businesses is, is, is things that we learned when we were at ADS Security. It's, again, the same team that is working together with me. Um, and part of what we learned over time there was, was how to prospect for these businesses. So... Another thing that's a little bit different about our strategy than a typical roll-up in this space, and there, are, by the way, there are a lot of private equity companies, back companies that are doing roll-ups in HVC and plumbing. There's, I've heard numbers from 80 to 160 wow. different efforts uh, to roll up. Our one thing that's a little different about our approach is we are pursuing businesses that are a little bit smaller than ones that are in the target range of those typical private equity-backed roll-ups. Um, and it, it's a strategy that we came to in security, in, in, at ADS Security, and we think it's working really well in HVAC and plumbing. So we're looking for companies that are that are small enough that they aren't getting a lot of attention from big buyers. So they don't have brokers banging on their door and they don't have these big roll-ups sure. that are pursuing them. Um, and uh, so the, the challenge is prospecting for them. So. Uh, we we build a big database of HVAC and plumbing businesses. Our original target was about 200 miles around Nashville. So we we started with the idea of every, every place has to be a one day drive yep. to get there and back. Uh, and uh, so we're kind of kind of Louisville to the north and Birmingham to the south and Knoxville to the east and Memphis to the west. Kind of in that great Kentucky, location, Tennessee. Yeah. 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 Um, so we we bought lists of all the companies in that in those cities in those markets, um, and we did a lot of research then to identify by looking at their websites and their Google reviews and and this is thousands six thousand companies I think in our database now, um, uh, researched them and identified prioritized them which ones we thought were uh, were higher priorities and then we we started out with a, a letter campaign. Uh, with a very kind of personal letter that we sent out. Uh, so when we started, we did we did uh, we printed these letters. I hand signed every one of them, hand addressed every envelope, put a real stamp on them, uh, and often wrote a note on each letter based on what I could learn about the company to to try to communicate to these owners that we were a little bit different than maybe the other lawyers or bankers that they might get a letter from every exactly. now and then. Um, to kind of kind of communicate a little bit about what's different about our culture. Because sometimes when you come into a business or you're a business owner and you're like, oh gosh, private equity's coming. Yeah, you know, they freeze up. No exactly. one, no one wants to talk to you. They they're yeah. kind of intimidated by it. They don't understand it. Yep. So you know, we're, we're just a bunch of good guys from the the same area that you live in that love field services businesses and enjoy the challenges that come with doing it. Uh, have done it before, bring a little bit of experience. Um, so, so we we strike that tone of being a different kind of a buyer. Um, so, it, so it's these letter campaigns, uh, and then we're very, we have a great um, marketing leader who's just extraordinary. And uh, so, every opportunity we have, we have this big database of emails and phone numbers, and so we send out every time we do a deal, we blast a really nice email to everybody. Um, we, uh, we recorded, one of the great things we did is we recorded a video with the first four owners of companies we bought. We brought them together, set them up in a, in a room and had a, uh, someone there to interview them and, and, uh, without preparing them at all, sat them down and just asked them some questions about what the process is like and how they were treated and how their team was treated. And of course they just said the most amazing things. Yeah. Uh, and that has been an extraordinary marketing tool for us because we can send that to prospects and they see guys that look just like they do saying exactly the same things that they're feeling uh, and uh, to kind of get them comfortable that 
mm. were the kind of people that they'd like to do business with. So, you know, we always like to, to say we're, we're just likable guys. Uh, we're fun to do business with. Uh, we want to be around people that we enjoy. And, um, and we've had great success in finding lots of candidates. We have a very, very deep pipeline of deals. We've closed five so far. This year we started, wow. our first was in March. So we've closed five deals this year, a sixth, uh, hopefully right around the end of the year. Um, hoping to do maybe a dozen or more next year. Goodness. What's the goal timeline from like first contact to you yeah. close the deal? Yeah, so it's really interesting. A lot of the, the our competitors that do this are, are often very pushy and aggressive. And our approach, our nature is very different. So. We always say we're, you know, as we contact folks, a lot of times what you hear is, hey, this is, you know, it's kind of interesting, but this is not the right time for me, you know, maybe down the road. Uh, and our approach always is, well, let's just meet for coffee. You know, it's always nice to make a new friend. We'll tell you what we're up to. You can tell us what you're up to. And, you know, um, so we, we, a lot of times it's just a friendly cup of coffee with somebody. Um, and if, if, thing, if the interest is there right away, we, we move pretty quickly. Our process can be from first meeting to an offer. It can be a month. That's the time to you know meet a few times, mm -hmm. gather financial information, put an offer together, uh, and then from signing a LOI letter of intent to close can be six to eight weeks. A lot of that depends on the ability of the of the seller to be able to provide the information because again these are small business guys and they're busy, so that can be sometimes that takes a little longer because sure. it's challenging to for them to focus their time. But but we've had deals uh, where we met someone. Uh, in fact, at ADS Security, we had one of the one of the best deals we did. I met the owner. Uh, it was a company in Louisville. I met him. We made an offer. He didn't accept it. We stayed in touch. It was seven years later that wow. we closed the deal. Oh my uh, gosh. After, I think it was the third yeah. offer we made to him, we closed the deal. Uh, he finally, I think we just wore him down. But... Um, <laughs> So you know, you know, our, what we always say is we're going to be here doing this for a long time. Uh, if it's a business we like, you know, we want to stay in touch with you. We'll let you know how we're doing. You keep us up to speed on how you're doing. When the time is right, we want to be the guy that you call. And and then what about like the million dollar question is is how do you start funding these companies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So when we when we started pulling this together, so this was uh, uh, summer of. 21, when we really got this, had this idea of what we wanted to do. Um, we, so we put a little bit of money together, uh, but we needed a big investor sure. to get this rolling. Uh, we pitched it to a bunch of private equity firms. Um, and it, it was interesting. We, we, had a, we had a good history, a track record, because we had done it at ADS. We had a really good exit at ADS. And that's important, I think, to investors to see that they're going to back a team that's done it before. But because our strategy was so non-traditional, because we are most of these pitches start with we're going to buy a big platform company and build from there, and our pitch was different. We're, our pitch was we're going to go out and we're going to find a bunch of little small companies, a and bunch build of little small, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, investors as much as a lot of them liked, I think liked us and our background, loved the idea of being in HVAC and plumbing. Um, they uh, they just couldn't wrap their head around we're gonna we're gonna fund this thing and you're gonna go out and buy, you know, little small companies in some cases doing three or four hundred thousand dollars a year in EBITDA. Yeah. Uh, you know, their thinking is well, we got to start with something that's at least two million, maybe five million, uh, and you know, our response was no, we're gonna we're gonna get to five, but we're gonna do it, you know, three or four or five hundred thousand at a time. Yeah. And um, so it, it, I had a good friend, a wonderful guy at a private equity firm that I had done some work with before in Chicago. Uh, and he, he, he loved what we had done at ADS Security. He loved our team. Uh, he loved the plan. Um, and he was the only one that was kind of willing to go out on a limb and say, we're going we're gonna to fund you. Um, so we started with $15 million. That was our original capitalization. Fifteen, you said. Fifteen million. 15, yeah. Okay. Uh, to start going out and doing these deals, and um, so we've done, uh, we've done five deals so far. We've uh, we just uh, got our first uh, debt. We 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 got a deal with a local bank just last month. So we've got some dry powder now, 
in debt that should carry us through, we think, most of next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's a, that, I mean, that's a challenge is, sure. is, is finding th- – there's a lot of investors that are really interested in putting money to work. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, the, the, it's easy to go with a tried-and-true concept, you know, to do what's been done before. If you got an idea that's a little bit out of the mainstream, that's a little bit different, you know, it can be, it can be pretty challenging. Uh, to convince somebody, and that's where having relationships, I think, with with folks that make these kind of decisions is really valuable. Yeah, I agree, and and because you always hear, you know, going out and all these firms have these strategies on on the ways that they're going to acquire, but they, you know, they never talk about the challenges of actually funding that yeah. opportunity, right? Yeah. And it's not like everybody has just money sitting in their pockets, because um, that's. Most of the time, not necessarily true, um, and so yeah, that that's that's a great explanation yeah. of of the the walkthrough on how to do something like that, yeah. um, and it's not something that's you know um, pr- pretty common to to understand, right? Yeah. Um, so so then I, I guess on the last leg of this, do you have like an exit strategy with this, or is this mm-hmm. kind of a permanent hold and cash flow play, or, or what's yeah? That so like? that's that's another thing that is very different about the various investors. Uh, is they all have circumstances that they're working it within that that lead to driving decisions like that. So often with private equity firms, they will have raised a fund uh, depending on when that fund started and where kind of you are in their cycle. You know, they're typical, typically they want to be out of all those investments in seven years, something like that. So you often have, uh, you know, a five-year horizon. But when when you mm-hmm. kind of get to a point where you have to trigger it, a sale, a, a liquidity event. So, um, the night, the wonderful thing about our partners is, uh, they, they, it's a family office, uh, and they don't, it's not a fund that they raise that they have to exit at a certain point. So mm. what I really like about them is their approach is it's the management team's decision when it's time to exit. Oh, wow. So, uh, so we aren't so held to anything. Yeah. There's right. no, there's no, uh, energy behind, pushing us to get out at a certain point. And, uh, you know, the, the, you know our, our view is that we get asked a lot about, you know, what our, what our exit's likely to be, how much time. And, I, you know, our answer is, hey, you know, right now the circumstances are really good to create value. Uh, as long as that continues and we think the future gives us the opportunity to do more of that, we're going to continue on Amazing. this path. And we need to earn that every day, right? We, we, need, to, we need to demonstrate that we can – close these deals and build great companies and bring these teams together and help them grow. Um, And as long as we're having fun doing it, you know, we're going to keep running. Of course, there'll be an exit at some point. Uh, It'll likely be, you know, sometime in the five plus year timeframe. But, um, but honestly, we're having so much fun doing what we're doing. And, and I I tell you, that's one thing that I've learned. uh, I think one of the biggest lessons I learned over the last couple of years is the importance of surrounding yourself with people that you like working with. Sure. Uh, and um, so we had, we had an awesome culture at ADS Security. The team was wonderful. I have the I have the most amazingly productive, fun team. We we love working together. We, we I mean every day is uh, when when your team tells you you know every week I hear from one of them how much fun they're having, how much they love what they're doing, mm-hmm. how happy they are, um, and and we carry that over to the to the companies that we look at acquiring. Um, if, if it's an owner that we don't think we'll enjoy working with, we don't pursue it. Mm. Wow. Uh, because because it's you're really kind of a family with these guys. Once your deal is done, you're working together. And if it's someone who is not going to be a contributing part of that team and sure. not just add financially to what we're doing, but but kind of help to build the culture, um, it's we don't want to be fighting against, you know, a headwind of someone who doesn't want to, play ball with us and yep. doesn't kind of believe in our vision. So thankfully we've had, it's a good enough space where we have the opportunity to be selective so we can find what we have found, which is just incredibly talented, hardworking, fun people to be around. And uh, yeah, when you can go you know, home every day after work, smiling, looking forward to the next day, you know you're doing something right. Mm. Can you talk about that team from ADS to this current project, like what each of your roles are mm-hmm. and I'm curious of strengths too. You know, yeah, so it, it it really is an extraordinary group. So so my CFO 
was with me at ADS. Uh, he and I were the first two that kind of came up with the concept and pitched it. So he's been with me every step of the way. Uh, and, and he's very, very talented uh, financial leader, uh, but he's so much more than that. He really, he's a deal guy. So he and I are front and center in all the deals. We, we ba- our goal is to build a team around us that can run the day-to-day operations of this business so that he and I can focus on deals because our success is predicated on a fast pace of deals. Sure. So, um, so he leads a great team, uh, uh, great accounting and finance team under him, but his time is largely spent on deals. So he's, he's, he's with me every step of the way as we're prospecting, meeting owners for the first time, engaging with them, evaluating them, coming up with a, uh, with a model uh, for an offer, a uh, structure for offers, uh, leads the diligence efforts, is with, you know, uh, every step of the way. So it's really important uh, to have, I think, w- in a company like ours, as small as we are getting started, we're about 200 employees now, but uh, you have to have leaders that are very versatile. So he is not just an accounting guy. He's so much more. And and the same for, we have two other real uh, key leaders on the team that join us from ADS, our HR VP and our marketing VP. Uh, and they are, they're business people. So uh, they they lead integration efforts. Um, they're very, very active in supporting the teams after we close. There's no, there's no lines or barriers. There's no, it's not my job or it's not my area. You know, they all step in wherever it's needed. And, and, our, our model is predicated on that, on leaders that, that are leaning in and filling gaps. Because when you, when you buy companies quickly and you're trying to integrate them, it, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things that can fall through the cracks. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes you can make that can affect the relationship you build, not just with the sellers, but with their employees and their teams. So everybody has to be focused on, um, on playing a role and making sure this process goes well. So, mm-hmm. so it was those the, that group from ADS, and then we we brought in uh, an incredible uh, addition to our team was a fellow that was at a large local HVAC company here that recently joined us, who's got years of experience in the space. Because you know we're not HVAC plumbing folks. I don't I don't have a background in it. My team doesn't. So we brought in a, a super guy who who knows it really really well. He's our VP of uh, operation support. So he's kind of leading the operations effort. Um, and, wow. and the combination of that kind of senior team uh, with a, a really strong uh, kind of uh, day-to-day operations team in each of these branches <coughs> uh, is just been a, it's been great. We're, we're growing fast. We're 20 plus percent organic growth uh, after closing these deals. We've got a big pipeline of deals and looking forward to a really Fun That's 2023. Amazing. Yeah, and, and I love the way, because my background's in private equity as well, and so when we were industry agnostic, mm-hmm. and, you know, we were 5 million to 40 million EBITDA. Yeah. And it's like, there's... Uh, that's every company, you know, <laughs> relatively yep. speaking. But once you focus really on something that you can prove to work and you're really good at that, that's where yeah. I, I'm, I'm just hearing that the value is at. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. And, and especially, too, it's all relationship-based, uh, what you're doing, and, and that's kind of how you're growing what you guys are doing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And so do you think you'll stay in HVAC and plumbing for, for a while, or do you think there's other home services you'll expand you know, into? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. When I was in the security business, I thought, you know, why would I ever want to do anything else? I loved that business. It was We had so much fun. Um, but, I, you know, I think you learn in life that uh, taking on new challenges um, is, uh, you know, is part of leading a fulfilled life. And, and you know, the, the, reward, the rewards you get from accomplishing new things is a lot of fun. Uh, so, you know, we're really, really excited about what we're doing here. I have a lot to learn. I mean, I am, I am you know, a year into this space uh, so, um, you know, by the time, depending on when we exit this, you know, I may be at a point where, um, I want to shift into, uh, doing something other than roll-ups, but, uh, <laughs> honestly, I'm having so much fun now. I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah. So, uh, and we'll you said what, you have 200 employees. 
Yeah, so with this fifth deal that we closed a couple of weeks ago, we're right at 200 employees. It's pretty good for your first year. Yeah, I mean that's amazing. Yeah, nine nine months in, um, <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're you know we're we're well ahead of the pace of the plan that we put together. I think we're close to our two year point uh, at, at nine months in. And do you think that that kind of solidifies your thesis? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 there's there's no question from our investor standpoint, our private equity backer. Uh, and our team, we are we are convinced we're on the right path. Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, we we just bring something a little bit different. We have the capability to integrate a lot of small deals quickly. Um, we have a, you know a model we think that fits really well with who we are as leaders. And um, you know, we're just going to keep plugging away at it. And we think there's a long runway for mm. us. Great. Well, and then what do you think? Um, I always like to ask these very successful yeah. people that, that we talk to on, like, what's your day-to-day -day life outside of work? I mean, do you have a pretty structured life? Are you pretty kind of yeah. fly by the seat of your pants? What, yeah. What's it? <laughs> Are you, like, exercise and stuff like that? What's yeah, well, you? as you can imagine, my military background, I'm I probably a, I'm pretty structured in a lot, I think, of what I do. Um, so, you know, first of all, I love living in Nashville been here 22 years and and can't imagine doing this anywhere else i live downtown i love the energy that comes from living in the middle of everything downtown yeah. so uh, you know i you know a, a big part of my life is my family i've i have uh, my mom and dad live here in town i have a daughter and a couple of grandkids that are here in town um and uh so that's you know that certainly takes up a part of my free time, and then, uh, you know, just enjoying Nashville, live music, all the fun stuff that oh, Nashville nice, has to yeah. offer. Uh, I don't well, yeah, cook. Yeah, you, you, you walked here. And, yeah, and I you're walked like, here. You're like, it was only a 30-minute walk. Yeah. <laughs> like, dang, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I, I, I needed to get a place downtown because I don't cook, and I needed to be close to restaurants. So yeah. I've, I've got a good opportunity to sample all the great food in Nashville and just enjoying um uh, enjoying a, a great place to live and a great community and, and wonderful people. And, you know, we talked a little bit about some of the common friends that we've had and folks we've met. I mean, it's just an extraordinary city to, to be in, to, to build a network, to enjoy what you're doing, to, to just meet some amazing, wonderful people. And from my perspective, it gets better all the time. Uh, there's lots of challenges of the city growing the way ours is, but um, the opportunity to just meet extraordinary people and engage with folks that you really respect and admire um, to me is a big part of living a happy life. Awesome. Agreed. Yeah. Well, do you have any other No, this questions? is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, we, this, this was great. I think just uh, to, to recap all of this, you know, the, the roll-up strategy that you guys are doing is very relationship-based and um, you guys have a really smart, strong strategy that that's um, with this. And I feel like you laid it out really well for our listeners to like understand and also for us too. So anyways, we appreciate you coming on and, um, and look forward to, to coming you back, uh, bringing you back on, you know, five years from now yep. and see where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Pleasure seeing you guys. Thank and, uh, you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, John.